The comedy genre has had many great duos, and Mel Brooks and Gene Wilder were the kings of the parody genre. They satirized westerns with Blazing Saddles, musicals with the producers, and gothic horror with Young Frankenstein. It was the connection between these two men that made their movies work. They were close friends who always came through for each other and made each other laugh. Keep watching to learn why Mel Brooks and Gene Wilder had a genuinely unusual relationship and how they used it to make truly wonderful films. Before They Were a Duo Jerome Silberman was born June 11, 1993, in Milwaukee. He began performing at a young age, inspired by other comedy greats like Charlie Chaplin. He studied at the Old Vic Theatre School in Bristol, England in the 50s. He served in the Army briefly before becoming a member of the Actors Studio in New York and adopting his stage name in 1961. His movie debut came in 1967 in the film Bonnie and Clyde. We know him better today as Gene Wilder. Melvin Kaminsky was born June 28, 1926 in Brooklyn. He served in WW2 as a captain before becoming an entertainer. He began by playing drums in nightclubs before moving on to comedy. His film debut in Easy Come, Easy Go was canceled when star Jan Berry got into a car wreck. He became a writer for Your Show of Shows in 1975 and Get Smart in 1965 before perfecting his brand of spoof movies. And we know him as Mel Brooks. Their Early Friendship Mel Brooks met Gene Wilder when his wife Anne Bancroft was acting with him in the play Mother Courage. They immediately began teasing each other and getting close. Gene was playing the role of the chaplain, a complex part that was meant to be taken seriously. He asked why it kept getting laughs. Mel replied, look in the mirror, blame it on God. They developed an immediate connection and began working together soon after that. Mel asked Gene to come to Fire Island to read a movie script he was working on. They went fishing and had dinner and talked about Springtime for Hitler, which would later become The Producers. He even offered Gene a part in it, which he graciously accepted. That began a lifetime connection that produced three comedy classics the world will never forget. Gene was asked in a PBS American Masters documentary if he thought his first meeting with Mel was important. He burst into a furious fit of laughter. The interviewer asked him what was so funny, and he compared it to God meeting Moses. It wasn't the only time he praised his friends. He told the LA Times in 1990 that without him, he'd still be working as a temporary typist and selling toys at FAO Schwartz. Before we tell you more, be sure to give this video a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. The Producers Gene was already promised the lead of Leo Bloom before production on the comedy musical The Producers began. He was happy to have the part, but not convinced it would get enough money to begin production. When it did, the two friends cried and hugged each other. There was also a bit of a doubt that Gene would get approved by the film's other lead, Zero Mostel. They arranged an audition, and Mel introduced them. Zero kissed Gene on the lips, and his manic energy complemented his co-star's more subdued nature. The movie began the tradition of Mel and Gene working together. Like most of their collaborations, it features a brief voice cameo from Mel. You can hear him during the Springtime for Hitler musical number. One of the most famous moments from the film was the blue blanket scene. Gene was exhausted and asked his friend what to do for energy. He wanted chocolate, but Mel recommended black coffee. Gene ate 17 chocolate bars and drank a cup of black coffee, and his manic energy created a major moment in movie history. The producers turned out to be a bigger success than either had expected. It earned Mel an Academy Award for Best Screenplay and Gene an Academy Award for Best Supporting Actor. The reviews and box office returns weren't great, but everyone loved Gene's performance. Blazing Saddles Blazing Saddles was Mel's satirical take on the Western genre. Pre-production didn't start off well. Warner Brothers executives didn't find it funny, but Mel got a better reaction when he took it to the studio's employees. Even taking the daring film to his studio was a gamble that eventually paid off. He promised to edit out offensive scenes, but never did. One where Bart says, you're sucking on my arm, was even added back to the home video release. Gene believed in the project more than the studio. He immediately asked if he could play gunslinger, alcoholic, Waco kid, but his friend had other plans. Mel wanted an older man for the part. He tried almost everyone he could find, including Dan Daly, John Wayne, and Johnny Carson. An Oscar-winning up-and-comer known as Gig Young seemed like a perfect fit until shooting began. The promising actor was also an alcoholic and was in withdrawal during his first morning. Mel called Gene in tears, and his friend came right away. He got the part he had been wanting in the end. Reviews for Blazing Saddles were mixed. Unlike most of his other films, reviewers didn't feel Gene was giving his best performance. The Hollywood Reporter disagreed, and the film became a box office hit and comedy classic. Young Frankenstein 
1974's Young Frankenstein is often considered one of the funniest movies of all time. It parodies James Whale movies and the horror genre as a whole, with a cast full of major names like Marty Feldman, Terry Garr, and Peter Boyle. Gene got the idea for the film in his bedroom one night. He wondered what would happen if the famous Dr. Frankenstein's great-grandson was called back to his relative's mansion. Gene wanted Mel to direct the film at first, but the situation was complicated. He wrote the film's name on a legal pad one day, and Mel asked him what he was working on. His friend initially dismissed his pitch, calling it cute. That all changed when the actor got a call from his agent who was also representing Peter and Marty at the time, and asked if he had any ideas for a movie with them in it. He said yes, and showed him a scene where the lead meets his servant Igor at Transylvania Station. He liked it and said Mel would be the perfect director. Gene wasn't sure if his friend would like the project, but called him anyway. Mel said, I don't know at first, but agreed the next day. Gene wanted Mel to be involved, but not act in it. He knew his off-the-wall, fourth-wall-breaking friend would swing the film into a crazy comedy which he didn't want. Mel had no hurt feelings and was allowed to provide a few off-screen sounds for a werewolf and Victor Frankenstein. The pair and the crew at large had such a wonderful time together, they had to stifle their onset laughter. They'd put white handkerchiefs in their mouth. It took Gene 15 takes to stop his laughter during a scene where he leads his co-star up a set of stairs. Mel even allegedly warned anyone who laughed during the putting on the Ritz scene would be arrested. That moment, a musical number where the monster dances with his creator, arguably went on to be the most famous scene from the film. It was also one of the only times that Mel Brooks and Gene Wilder genuinely fought with each other. They argued whether or not to put it in the film for at least 20 minutes. Mel eventually realized if his friend was willing to fight for it, it must be worth it, and it was one of the best decisions he ever made. Young Frankenstein made Mel Brooks the last filmmaker on record to have two films in the top five of the box office for a whole year. It earned $86 million, and Blazing Saddles earned $119 million. Gene's Death Gene Wilder died in his home August 29, 2016, at age 83. His nephew Jordan Walker Perlman confirmed that the cause of death was complications of Alzheimer's. They chose to hide how serious his condition had become, until then, to keep his fans from worrying. Mel admits he knew his friend was sick and expected he would go, but was sent reeling when the news came. He tweeted a sentimental message calling him one of the greatest talents of our time. He also said he blessed every film they did with his magic and blessed him with their friendship. Now it's time to hear from you. Who's your favorite comedy duo in Hollywood? Let us know in the comments section below. And before you go, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to Factsverse if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content.